Hi, I'm Bob Beckel from the University of Colorado School of Medicine, just east of Denver in Aurora, Colorado. And I'm here at the third heart and diabetes meeting here in Philadelphia to talk about the proposal for an entirely new medical subspecialty. And that subspecialty, Mike Blahoff from Johns Hopkins and I have entitled cardiometabolic medicine. I think the time is ripe really to consider such a formal training program in cardiometabolic medicine. We know that obesity continues to increase, that metabolic syndrome follows, and a higher incidence of type 2 diabetes is before us. And as the population overall ages, the relationship between risk factors that relate to obesity, metabolic syndrome, and type 2 diabetes then transition into cardiovascular disease, heart attack, stroke, death from cardiovascular disease. And certainly, many of the risk factors that lead to cardiovascular disease are present in this population. So nowadays, let's have a patient admitted to the hospital with an acute myocardial infarction who may have historically been glucose intolerant and now has type 2 diabetes. Who sees this patient at discharge? Clearly, the hospitalist cardiologist will not be seeing this patient at discharge, at least most likely. So he or she will be entering into a new space with a new cardiologist, likely the first visit. But considering the recent trials with GLP-1 receptor agonists, and the SGLT2 inhibitors, this patient may well be a candidate for one of these therapies, not only to treat their diabetes, but also to be considered as a reduction in risk for cardiovascular disease as that therapy is ongoing. Now, metformin typically is utilized as the first oral glucose-lowering agent to treat type 2 diabetes. But now with these new trials, this physician of record must consider these other agents. I would contend the cardiologist is not comfortable taking care of patients with diabetes, particularly when strategies go beyond metformin alone. Now, the endocrinologist is certainly capable, but what if the patient develops a cardiac rhythm disturbance or in fact has chest pain during his or her visit to the endocrinologist? Then a referral back to the cardiologist is necessary. And the primary care internist or family practitioner may not be prepared or evidence-based in terms of their therapeutic approach to this patient. So what we're proposing is a post-internal medicine residency training program that is in cardiometabolic medicine. And this would encompass aspects of endocrinology and metabolism, which are mostly metabolically focused. There'd be no thyroid, no reproductive endocrinology, no metabolic bone disease. And on the cardiology side, there'd be no interventional cardiology, there'd no, be no electrophysiology, there'd be no advanced heart failure or transplantation cardiology, but the entire focus would be this overlap venture between preventive cardiology and metabolic diseases on the endocrine side. So this specialist, after a two to three year additional training program, would be entirely prepared to meet every aspect of this growing population of obese, patients with type 2 diabetes or other high cardiovascular disease risk, in addition to having known heart disease or, or alternatively very high risk for heart disease. So this is an important consideration for the future. This is not a quick fix. This is going to take a planning phase of maybe five to 10 years to allow programs to be developed. And ultimately, it will be an option that Mike Blaha or myself would have chosen had we had that choice 10 or 20 years ago. Thank you very much.